we've got a small engine part that might look familiar, except you won't recognize it once you see how it's been reimagined for 3D printing. We talk about design for additive manufacturing on this episode of The Cool Parts Show. Thanks to Carpenter Additive for sponsoring Season 2 of The Cool Part Show and for showing us around their Emerging Technology Center here in Athens, Alabama. Stick around at the end of the episode. We're going to talk about safety for Metal AM. Now back to the show. I'm Pete. I'm Stephanie. We're with Additive Manufacturing.media. And this is The Cool Part Show. This is our show all about cool 3D printed parts. Cool parts made additively by manufacturers, maybe manufacturers like you. All right, Pete, so we've got a whole selection of parts here on the table in front of us. Um, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about design for additive manufacturing. I say that term, what do you think of? Um, so I think of this idea that if you're designing a part to be made additively, you're not just thinking about the form and the function, you have to also think about things in the printing process. Um, the orientation, the support structures, things like that. And if you are maybe going from a conventional process to an additive process, um, you are probably going to want to rethink that part and maybe kind of reimagine it even. So, so yeah, so um, reimagining the part for additive manufacturing. That's, that's what I've got here. This is actually all the same part, all the same component reimagined for additive manufacturing. All right, so I'm going to stop you right there. Um, basics first. Sure. What is this that I'm looking at? This is the cylinder um, for a one-cylinder engine made by Cobra Aero. Um, it is the engine for an unmanned aerial system. Think drones. Um, a piston goes in here. Uh, it's the cylinder for an engine that powers an, uh, an unmanned aircraft like maybe the military might use. All right, so just looking at this group of parts in front of me, um, I'm going to guess that this one is the original before 3D printing. Okay, uh, super good guess. You're right. Why do you say that? Um, so the, the surface finish, it looks smoother than the other two on the table. And also, I believe um, it's two parts. So is part consolidation the reason they went to 3D printing? Um, part of the reason, just part of the reason. Uh, the bigger reason is cooling. Um, so these fins uh, provide for heat transfer, but the problem with this part is there's not enough of the fins, and so this cylinder doesn't cool as effectively as it should. This part, you're right, it was not made additively, it was made from casting, so it's molten metal that was poured into a mold, and casting, the casting mold, limited how close together the fins can be, and so limited the number of fins. So here is the part produced through 3D printing, and you're right, they could just print it as one entire solid piece. It's still the same cylinder, still has the same insides, but you can see there's a lot more fins because 3D printing lets the fins get closer together. So this part solves the cooling problem and provides for the level of cooling that this engine needs. Okay, so you get away from casting, which means you get away from tooling, and you get away from the limitations that the tooling imposes on your design. Right. So moving to 3D printing allows for more fins closer together. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is the printing process that they're using to make this? Sure. Uh, so it's selective laser melting on a machine from Renishaw. So basically a laser moves through a bed of powder metal. Uh, the laser melts the metal in its path and it solidifies to layer by layer by layer to build this complicated form. All right, so you said the name of the company is Cobra Aero. Tell me about them. Yeah, yeah, so they're interesting. The original company is Cobra Moto, leading producer of youth motocross bikes. <laughs> and uh, it turns out this application, military drones, it's the same challenge. How do you make a powerful small engine? Here is Sean Hilbert, who's the president of Cobra Aero, to say more about that. Um, historically, these engines have been hobby engines, so um, the, the payload systems on these aircraft uh, really outpaced the engines themselves for many, many years. And it was actually very counterproductive because those engines were not made for long-term durable applications. They were made for 
hobby sprint applications. And the bottom line is the military was losing a lot of very expensive payloads because the engines were conking out. Okay, so there's three parts on the table. We've talked about two of them, and I'm getting the sense that this is not the final part. Right, so this part solved the cooling problem, um, but it created a manufacturing problem. Look at this. What do you see here? Oh, okay, so there's a whole bunch of support structures on this side of the part holding up all of these fins, and I imagine that somebody's gotta then manually clip all those off and clean up that part. That's right. While this part is being 3D printed, to support it while it's still incomplete, a design like this required all of these external supports. This is wasted material, and it took a lot of hand labor to remove it. Um, so, to solve the manufacturing problem, this is how they reimagined the part. Again, on the inside, it's the same. Hmm. It's, it's still yeah. a cylinder. Now, the cooling fins have been replaced by, by you can see, this lattice structure. Uh, the lattice structure is completely contained within this cowl, and uh, no support structures are needed. The part is complete, pretty much ready to go as it comes out of additive manufacturing. Yeah, so that's like a total reimagining. They've completely abandoned this idea of having fins and the lattices are doing all of that cooling now. Yeah. So how did they design this part? So you might know how they designed this part, at least the lattices. Um, do you remember the Cool Parts Show, season one, episode two? Uh, if I recall, that was our episode on spine implants. Right. So do you remember how they designed the, the topology-optimized implants, the software they used? Um, yeah, from Entopology. So that's right. That's right. Uh, so Entopology software. Um, Cobra Arrow used that to help them design these lattices. Okay, so the other thing that I remember about the spine implant episode, though, is that the lattice was really crazy. Like, the struts were going every which way. By comparison, this looks pretty simple. Um, it is simple if you look at the outer surface here, but there are some things going on. The lattices geometrically follow this kind of organic shape of the cowl, um, and they also made up with the, the cylinder form on the inside, and there's no disconnect uh, throughout there. And also, internally, the form of the lattice changes to optimize the cooling effect. So this lattice pattern you see it on the outside Side, it transitions into a different form on the inside. Okay, so there actually is like some complexity to designing a lattice that's going to change through the course of the part and then to get it to kind of terminate on the, on the edges. Right, yeah. right. There's design complexity to take advantage of the fact that additive manufacturing can produce complexity like that in a way that another process can't. All right, so like that seems like a pretty big stretch. We're pretty far past motocross bikes right now. Yeah, I guess so. So is additive manufacturing used for more than cylinders? Um, yeah, and actually it, it kind of had to be. Here's Sean Hilbert again, Cobra Arrow, to talk about this, to talk about how they thought about additive manufacturing when they were first getting into it. I had a, a notion that when we first got this machine that we would be using it in ways and, and dreaming up things that we never would have thought of otherwise. In fact, when we first did the math on is this thing going to pay back, we had to kind of fudge things a little bit to say, you know what, we better, we better be able to use this machine in ways that we never dreamed of or else it won't pay back for us. And, and as it turns out, I think that, that calculation was way too conservative. We've been able to use it in ways that, that we really never never dreamed of to begin with. We're using it for tooling, we're using it for rapid iterations of prototypes, and we're using it for production work all at the same time. Probably the best opportunity that we saw that we didn't expect was the engine mount uh, on, our, on our A33 uh, single cylinder aircraft engine. Um, we had competitors and we had customers that had their own mounts, and, and our notion early on was, well, either we'll buy uh, this mount because that wasn't really core to our business, or um, we'll just sell the engine without a mount to our customer and they've got their own mount. We looked at their mount designs and we realized that they were heavy, they were complex, they were bulky. So we said, hey, here's an opportunity for us to rethink things a little bit. And as it turns out, uh, we created a mount that isolates the engine from the fuselage much better. And as far as the weight goes, we were able to op you know, uh, optimize the topology of it to the point where um, our lightest competitor's mount is about 385 grams, and we came in at about 160. 
Yeah, so those, those engine mounts, did you see those parts? Uh, another example of parts reimagined for additive manufacturing. Those engine mounts are way lighter than the part used to be, but first they had to conceive of a form of it that is easy to make through additive manufacturing, but would be way different from how that part would look if you made it any other way. Yeah, so it sounds like Cobra is really kind of embracing this idea of design for additive manufacturing. It's not just about the function, but also how you're going to make the part. Yeah. Okay, so I, I think I got this. Um, this is a 3D printed cylinder for a drone engine. Um, it's a part that used to be made in two different pieces um, with a casting process. Moving to 3D printing allowed them to consolidate that part. Um, and so then they transitioned to a totally different design using lattices as the cooling mechanism. And as a result, this part functions better and it's also a lot easier to manufacture. The post-processing is really, really minimal now. Yeah, nailed it. So that's our episode. Thank you for watching the Cool Parts Show. If you're making a cool part and you want to tell us about it, email us, coolparts at additivemanufacturing.media. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm here in the gowning area at Carpenter Additives Emerging Technology Center in Athens, Alabama. This is a contract production facility that's set up to handle everything from concept to creation, taking metal powder and turning it into 3D printed parts. There are some dangers involved in the metal powder bed fusion process, the technology that's used here. Personal protective equipment or PPE like safety glasses and respirators can help to protect individual operators but facility-wide systems and procedures are the best way to prevent a problem. Obviously, with metal powder additive manufacturing, there's some inherent hazards with using metal powder. The, the first is that metal powder can be flammable um, or combustible. It's really important that you keep any static discharge um, out of the manufacturing floor. We have electrostatic dissipative flooring, um, we also require all of our employees to wear special safety shoes that are also static dissipative. We have dedicated special rooms for powder handling and those rooms are used anytime there's a lot of open powder. So there's a full face mask that you have to wear, um, there's different suits you have to wear. And so by containing the bulk of the powder handling to these specific rooms, we limit the amount of exposure there is to the general shop floor.